Dear Diary, today I take the next step, the next step in being an ADHD life coach at Indigo Hub. I can't believe it's happening. I want to build, create and discover a place for us to truly be ourselves. I think this journey will be... Shh, the Indigo Diary. Dear Diary, welcome world to the Indigo Diaries and welcome to our new series, Series 3, The World Through Our Eyes with your host, me, Tasha Hickett. The Indigo Diaries is a podcast for those who want to learn about ADHD through others and our own experiences. This week, uh, very excited, back with an open mind session where we discuss topics of interest and have reflections and awareness questions to the audience. And I'm very excited because we've got another guest and it's not just me in the the studio today, even though we're not in studio. Um, And we've got another expert this season. But what I love is I love I love reaching out to people that I've never met. But I also really love bringing like my friends in the community and professional friends on my podcast to (laughs) really because like we I taught this person quite a lot. But to actually have him here and uh, come and speak is a big honor. So welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. So let me tell you a bit about Alex. Alex is an ADHD specialist, a BACP psychotherapist, ICF coach, and mental health first aid instructor. He dedicates his life to helping others understand and thrive with neurodiversity. His portfolio career spans film and television, international business development, and nonprofit operations. He currently is about to make the biggest move of his life, immigrating to New Zealand, and he's just about to launch two ADHD courses. One being co-developed with another ADHD coach that's for anyone wanting to gain a deeper understanding of the lived experience of ADHD and the other is an on-demand self-compassion course especially for ADHDers and that's actually we're going to drive straight into it (laughs) self-compassion is kind of we 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 spoke a lot about what we would talk about um because you know we've got we're so interesting people got lots to talk about but (laughs) self-compassion I know for many of us like myself I didn't really like when I when I saw that word self-compassion I don't Re- I didn't really understand like before I was diagnosed what actually that meant so mm. I didn't know if you wanted to kind of just start Alex with just kind of explaining what it actually means yeah it I, I would say that self-compassion f- for me and I guess many people is this sort of like um you start from a place of like not like it's like you believe the myths of AD of self-compassion of um it's about pity or it's about narcissism or it's mm. it's going to make me lazy you have these kind of ideas um and they're all from like media and hearsay like often I'll be like where did you find that information and it's and often they're like well uh, uh, and it's, <laughs> and it's like have you spent some time exploring it you know and and that's when people go well not really and and that was where I was at the beginning um and there was um so Dr. Kristin Neff, she's kind of like what I call the queen of self-compassion, uh, queen with a KW. I love how you did, for, queen! <laughs> yeah, queen with a KW. Um, and um, there was something that she said in a, in a talk, which was that, because I was coming into it thinking, you know, I, I associated self-compassion with those Instagram posts that say, just be kind to yourself. Yeah, be Um, positive. Look in the mirror and tell you love yourself. (laughs) Yeah, and I was just thinking, tell that to my ADHD brain. Um, You know, it's it's got a lot of reference points which which suggest Mm. that's not the case. Um, And so she then said this thing that really moved me. She just said, you know, um, self-compassion is not about the practice of good feelings. It's about the practice of goodwill. And it really, like, it really hit me, this idea of goodwill. Um, there being something about, it's about something directed towards myself that's, that, that, that's good, that's nourishing, that's edifying, that's supportive. It's not about fluffy, lovely words necessarily. Mm. It's, it's something much more deep and profound. And so that was really the start for me about understanding self-compassion for myself. Um, and I'd say the second thing, that helped me start to engage with a bit more practically was uh, a lot of self mindful self-compassion kind of teachers talk about the, 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 the self-talk, the way that we speak to ourselves. Mm. And then we say, you say, well, would you say that to a good friend? And, and not, nearly always the answer is no, because you don't want to be a dick, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. Yeah, you can but, swear. It's all going to happen. Okay, okay, okay. Um, 
and nearly always the answer is no and so there is this thing about then understanding well what is my self-talk and how does it show up and where does it show up in my life Mm -hmm. and so for me that was this that's been that evolutionary process and then of course then I decided I should probably make this a bit more public and do a course which is what you know what you're doing now but I really like what you said there good feeling because we got this thing it's like tell yourself you love yourself tell yourself that you're great but like my edits your mind goes no you're not do you remember this one time when you did this or do you remember this time do you remember that time and it's that good goodwill you know I wouldn't wouldn't act like that to somebody else Mm. so why am I acting like that with myself yeah there's a bit in the course that um I touch on which is the theory of constructed emotion by Dr Lisa Barrett yeah. is it Lisa Barrett yeah the uh, emotions. Barrett. yeah about how emotions are made mm. you know and that's changed our understanding of that and there are these three ingredients to the brain creating emotions and the one that um that really struck me was the the third ingredient is is past experiences and memories that the brain uses as a reference point mm. in order to construct the emotion in the moment that it thinks is most like appropriate yeah you know, because the brain is kind of predicting what's going to happen, what's happening now, what's happening next. And, you know, we talk about an ADHD, um, RSD, rejection sensitive dysphoria. Yeah. When you think about that, that is like the avoidance of actual or perceived rejection. Mm-hmm. If we've had lots and lots of these rejective experiences, you know, if you just say, just be kind to yourself, the brain's like, well, we got a lot of fact in the past here that suggests <laughs> that isn't true. So yeah. I call bullshit, you know? Yeah, it's because it's the evidence. Thing. It's the evidence. We've got yeah. all this evidence to prove that these yeah. words don't make sense. And exactly. If anyone wants that book, I'm going to put it below because that is one of my favorite books. It's mm. hard to read. It's quite it's quite lengthy, but it's very, very touches upon some great things. So how does... What, what, just on that point, one thing yeah. I would say for all the listeners who are ADHD is change the way you read books. Okay, this, yeah. is, this was a game changer for me. We think that you have to start at the beginning and then you work through to the end. Who, who told you that? Go to the contents pick a chapter that's most interesting to you start there you might find you keep reading (laughs) i say that was a game changer for me in reading books or uh, uh, factual books i say dip and dive so i if if i really like a good book like and it's going to be really good and i know that i'm going to read it all then i dive (laughs) straight into it my high focus but then if it's one of those books it's like oh no i i dip so I dip yeah. between the contents that I want to get yeah. and, I, and I frame that in my mind. So I'm like, but this is dive, this is dip. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. You kind of get an assessment of the book of, is this a dive or a dip book? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, do you know what though? I'm not sure there are many books in my life that are dives unless they're a fictional book. I think ah. all the factual books have ever been, have all been dips. And in my head, I set to myself this lower expectation that I will never complete a book. I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like non-fiction. I hate fiction. Um, oh, right. this is I brilliant. Love it. I love it, go off topic, brilliant. But um, so how does, like, obviously, you know, how does self-compassion, you kind of spoke a little bit about RSD there, how does it kind of correlate with ADHD? How does self-compassion correlate with ADHD? Yeah, so how does how does it affect it? Well, um, there was earlier this year, the University of Sheffield, um, excuse me, I'm drinking a pumpkin spice latte, listeners, and it's quite thick, <clears throat> so I apologise. Um, so the research that came out from the University of Sheffield s- suggested that um, they took a large pool of people, ADHDs and non-ADHDs, and they put them through the NEF self-compassion scale, and there were various different things that they studied. And what they noticed was is that, unsurprisingly, ADHDs had, had lower self-compassion scores than the non-ADHDs. But the lower self-compassion scores also led to poorer mental health outcomes than the low self-compassion scores for the non-ADHDs with low self-compassion. Um, and so... For me, that says something about mm. if we if, if we're taking this idea that it's that it's an act of goodwill, and there's a few areas to self compassion. We have this idea of um, um, mindfulness versus over identification, so overly identifying with thoughts and feelings. Mm. Um, we have this um, the idea of um, 
being in isolation or common humanity. This is this part of self-compassion that's all about we're human, we're imperfect, we experience pain, we're not alone. Mm. Um, and so, um, yeah, so so it's, um, so I think for, for me, there's something about um, the fact that we often grow up not knowing that we have ADHD. And actually I'm very privileged because I, I was one of the first people in the UK to be diagnosed back in 1990. And a lot of people say to me, you know, oh, you're so lucky. And to a certain degree, yes. But what I would say, and I am 37, is that I've been in denial of it for, for, for a real chunk of my life and then got re-diagnosed as an adult. And I think that there's something about how self-compassion opens up this I think it's like a vehicle to redefining the relationship that we have with ourselves, because let's face it, a lot of ADHDs have a very negative relationship to themselves. They're very yeah. critical. Mm -hmm. um, in my self-compassion course, there's a, there's a module um, all about um, the core belief of not being good enough. Yeah. And that from that place of not being good enough, we have things like I'm ugly, I'm worthless, I'm lazy. I'm, it's almost like, but it comes from this like real deep rooted belief system and i like to think of it being like the lens the it's like the tinted glasses that we wear yeah. all the time and we see the world around us we see people and we mm -hmm. see ourselves through this filter that i'm not good enough and so that Im impacts on our behaviors but that also impacts on when you stub your toe do you shout yeah. out you fucking idiot yeah like it's quick yeah. right but that speaks to the relationship that we have with ourselves and this self-compassion for me and I think this is why the research from Sheffield has has been so important and I gosh I hope there's more research that's going to come out as a result of it is realizing and for me is you know and I'm I'm a I'm not saying that medication's for everyone, but medication's yeah, yeah, been yeah. a game changer for me. Exactly. Um, it literally got me to pass my psychotherapy training um, I would say that the self-compassion piece for me has been as impactful as medication, as like medication done, done, done right. Um, because it's changed this relationship I have with myself and spoiler alert, I feel a lot happier, a lot calmer. Um, I actually feel less overwhelmed, but when I am overwhelmed, cause it's going to happen, there is this thing about how do I relate to myself when that happens? And that's where the self-compassion piece steps yeah, in. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, but it, it's funny because like, the you know society and all that but it's just such about relationship with other people relationship with your partner relationship with your parents the relationship with your friends you know have friends connection but nobody yeah. ever looks in the mirror and says what about the connection with yourself and yeah. that's the thing when people get diagnosed they go on medication or that but if they've not got that self-compassion or they come to coaching they've mm. not got that self-compassion then it's like they don't give themselves permissions to do things a different way yeah. They give themselves permission to do it. And then it's like, well, I didn't do it, so I'm not going to be able to do it. And it's yeah, it's that mm. being able to take that and what we put out to other people, mm. we've got to put on to ourselves. But in society, we get seen that as selfish. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a really good um example of that that I use, which is the difference. And this this isn't like a actual thing, it's just something I've come up with. Um, <laughs> so I'm not talking like I'm a someone of, someone of authority here that I've done research on this. No, no. I just I just like float it out there to people and they go, oh yeah, that totally relates. So yeah. this is anecdotal, but is the difference between neurotypical perfectionism and ADHD perfectionism. Mm. Neurotypical perfectionism is I'll give the example of like painting a room. You paint the room as a neurotypical, and if you're a neurotypical, if you're a neurotypical and you have perfectionism, then you'll notice all the little nicks that you're not happy with, like the little paint jobs or the little, like it's not perfect. And you yeah. want to criticize yourself for not doing a perfect job. The ADHD -er will walk into the room and the room isn't painted because they haven't got the right tools. They're wondering like, um, you know, the first person that goes into this room, will they think it's good enough? There's that good enough bit. And so there's all of these like, perfectionistic um variables that mean they don't actually paint the room yeah 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 and I always find there was there was something that came out a while ago about like having the perfect time you know like oh it's not the perfect time so then that stops activation and then it, you know it, it looks 
very different in neurotypical mm. and neurodiverse because mm. of the, the experiences we've had and the brain we have yeah yeah and the self <clears throat> excuse me the self-compassion piece with this ADHD perfectionism for me is about is is giving ourselves space to notice what is happening right now mm-hmm. and, and and that is the essence of mindfulness is is training the mind in how to be here where we are right now in this second that's mm-hmm. it it's not about um <laughs> like you know, and, and there, there you know the listeners can't see the me I'm being cross legged. I just looked he just literally put his hands up close to his eyes and went um <laughs> don't get me wrong like a meditation is great but it's a bit like going to the gym like it's it's a practice you know and that's part of what I talk about in the course is about understanding how we can engage in some of these really helpful practices that are ADHD friendly like a lot of the practices I do in the course I'm like if you're sitting down you don't need to yeah (laughs) yeah go and move like you know do you want to stand you know do you want to be on one leg why not knock yourself out see how you find it you might find you're really focused yeah stand on um, your head do whatever stand, you need do to what, do, to do be whatever there. you need to do yeah. to be this is to train your mind in how to be here yeah. um you know and so there is um uh there is something about like noticing being curious about when some of these things start to show up in your lives and then giving yourself a bit of that space to go like what's the self talk yeah. what's going on here like is this room gonna get painted yeah yeah I remember a while ago when I met you like a long time ago you talked about this space I'm sorry I did I, mm. did, nick, I did nick that because it's about oh, Victor Frankl. <laughs> yeah it's about the space because it's about pausing but pausing yes that's fine but there, there's got to be a space between that and that and that's where that inhibition comes in and all that but they've got to be a space between you know going you know, when you hit your toe, oh, stupid idiot. You know, there's got to be that space. And that, but that also like meditation Mm. all that takes time because it's a skill. Yeah. And, and and it's not about getting it right. And I remember that the the space, it's interesting. The space thing was such an important thing for me and the space thing actually didn't actually make it in the final course in the end, because there were other things that were important. I think the space is going to feature in something else. Um, But the thing that I, you know, we're going to get it, we're not going to self-compassion. I think for a lot of ADHD, they jump into it. And again, because we have these super high expectations on ourselves, we're like, we're going to be really kind on ourselves. It's going to be really great. And we're going to be, um, you know, and spoiler alert, you're not like, and that isn't, that isn't what self-compassion is. It's, um, it really is an adventure. I think for ADHD Mm. is self-compassion because, and it's not a journey. It's definitely adventure because, there's a lot of unpredictability about what's going to come up for you as yeah. you start to engage in it, particularly if you're going, do you know what? Let's not have that lofty expectation, Yeah. you know, because I can tell you now, still when I make a physical mistake or I do something, mm. there is this like, you know, we have ADHD has had like those spiky profiles. We can have this very intense emotional reaction, often frustration with ourselves Um, which we know thanks to Dr. Thomas Brown is one of the hardest emotions for us to regulate frustration that it happens. And instead of me jumping to the judgment of, Oh, that wasn't a self-compassionate response. It's more about going, I need to take myself off for a moment yeah, and like, and just acknowledge that's happened. And then what do I want to do about it? You know, like what, what, what do I need? And it's, it's a small thing, right? Because it could just be like I used the example in the course of like I opened the fridge door and like a jar smashed on the floor mm. and I like shout, I like, you know, exp- uh, was cursing at myself. And it wasn't about the annoyance of like cleaning up the mess and everything. Mm. It was totally about this thing that was outside of my control that mm. happened, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then you suddenly blame yourself. Exactly. And it's going to, it's going to happen because yeah. life is unpredictable. Life is going to, that is, this is the reality of being yeah. human. We experience pain. Yeah. And you know? I think that, I think that for a lot of what I see in myself, when I was, when I was diagnosed, it, this, this, this wasn't the bit where self-compassion really like started to highlight for me. It was mm-hmm. when, after I was like diagnosed, it's like, right, I'm going to fix it. Yeah. going to fix it. And I went to like, <laughs> fix it mode, like going to fix oh, it. I'm gonna classic. Do, yeah. 
<laughs> everything I can. I'm going to learn everything. I'm going to do everything I can to be this. So I'd like do it all. And then like, I'd come up with all these stresses and they'd work. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm doing this. And then like one day, I remember something didn't work. I went out, I went out to the doctors mm. and like, I got this strategy for patients and I had to wait for two hours at this doctor's office, which is just ridiculous for anybody. Oh, and it didn't I, work. I can I feel lied. it in my chest. <laughs> just imagine you sat there. I lost my shit. Like, I lost my crap. Like I was like pacing. Oh. I was like, oh my God. People were looking at me. I was in Malaysia. People were staring oh. at me. And I was like, I, I rang my partner like, this is the worst. I got home and I was like, oh well all the stuff that I've been doing for the past six months is not working mm. but then my, my coach said to me Tash you still have ADHD mm. it doesn't matter how much you put in place sometimes that's going to win and that's okay yeah. but just saying to yourself do mm. you know what this is really difficult yeah this is really difficult this is horrendous I hate mm. waiting what do I need mm. it... yeah and that yeah. was the I... biggest self-compassion thing I ever learned I think that we are consistently inconsistent yeah, as ADHD okay. is. Like, I think there is something about trying to, and I think I, uh, for me personally, I think this, the need to be consistent is quite a neurotypical ideal that we're yeah. trying to measure ourselves up to and we're going to fall short, mm -hmm. you know, and even like, I'm just noticing my, my language here. It's like, like, what is a win? Like, you know, I, I, if we look at, if we go into the more meaningful existential part of this, like, I think there's something about the value that we put on certain things, mm. which is not to do with the relationship with ourselves. It's to do with things outside of ourselves, you know, because that's the society that we live in. That's the Instagram TikTok mm. thing that, that we live in now. And I think there is something about being like, it's, um, so Kristen Neff, um, her latest book is called Fear Self Compassion, and I love it. And everyone should read it. Um, it 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 speaks about, um, and I think this is an ADHD friendly. Really, self compassion chime with me, but this is like really, really set me over. Which is, there are, almost think about self compassion as having these two sort of complementary, but also at odds with each other energies think of like the yin and the yang um symbol here um where you have this um the kind of more what we understand self-compassion to be this sort of nurturing um energy um and she described it as this kind of like um a tender a tender self-compassion that's like um that's like a like like a mama bear that is like supporting her cubs um or his cubs or their cubs um you know and there is that tender nurturing but then there is then there is this other side of 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 self-compassion which is this fierceness which is boundaried and it's the mama bear that's like protecting her cubs having to move her cubs to a more fertile land that's having to be quite um assertive mm -hmm. uh, and 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 boundaried and i quite like it because it helps me think about when I need, you know, we often overly commit to things as ADHD mm. is, right? And that's not an act of self-compassion, right? Like that's that that actually inevitably does cause us pain in some yeah. kind of a way. And I like this idea of this fierceness that's quite empowering. Yeah. You know, it's like my no is no and my yes is yes. And I want to think about the things that I say yes to because the things I say yes to mean that I'm saying no to other things, even if I don't realize it. Yeah, and it comes back to that space, about exactly. creating yeah. that space. So we're exactly. gonna create a space now Brilliant. and have a quick break. <laughs> awesome. I, I, like I, did you, I, like, I like what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> that was not thought, that was just thought in the moment. Um, and then we'll be back and we'll carry on talking to Alex about self-compassion. And we're out. If you would like any more information on Indigo Hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, 
have a positive week. Check in again later. And we're out. And we're back. And as always, <laughs> we start talking in the break. It never happens. Oh no, we need to go on record. Yeah. It's like a it's like a ritual. And most of the time I'm like, oh right, we need to get back on and then, but it always does. Um mm. so we're back and we we're talking about self-compassion with Alex. And if you uh haven't this to first off and go back we're talking about kind of what self-compassion is and what it means to people with ADHD so Alex I really want to know kind of what what is your passion for self-compassion and what does that look like in your life it's a it's a good question a big question I kind of went like <laughs> and my brain just went ew <laughs> it does not compute really good question um for me, it's twofold. It's mm-hmm. it's about it. Self compassion has helped me become much more self aware. Mm-hmm. Um, in all aspects of my life, but it has also helped me to um to see people um in terms of um like so for instance like when I'm working as a therapist or a coach um you know we have lots of feelings about our clients right Mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not always like positive feelings they might be annoying for instance that's normal that's human right like we're not perfect um we never were but the compassion piece for myself can then also help me see people Mm -hmm. so so when i'm frustrated let's say instead of staying in the frustration, it's like just being honest and real. I'm frustrated. I wonder what's going on for them, you know? And, and it helps me to, I think, take in a bit more of their humanity. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Kristin Neff kind of talks about this. She mentions in her book about, you know, the, 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 the person on the street, maybe who starts squeegeeing your window and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I can't know, like, go away kind of thing and we're avoiding eye contact and and there's something about how self-compassion can help us kind of bridge that 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 connection gap you know and it's not that somehow you then just start giving out all your money to every single person on the street Mm -hmm. but there is something about you you feeling compassion for them you know and it might just be that you give them a smile yeah you know and and People might go, yeah, well, if you're doing that, then you might as well, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. This isn't, we're not going into doing and trying to go into that expectation piece here. It is just about recognizing this is another human being who's trying to make a buck, right? And it's annoying for you, but this is their way, their way of trying to make make it in the world. Mm-hmm. And and I, I kind of find that quite helpful, you know, that it's okay if a, I don't want to give him money or her money, mm. um, but maybe, but actually, I do want to. I do want to give them my humanity. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And then it's about giving that to yourself. And yes, and and, and so there is this, there is this um, process by which you have this, this new relationship internally, you yourself and you. <laughs> And then that starts to have an impact on how you see other people because the self-talk, the self-relationship mirrors then, is mirrored in how you see people, pe- people groups, yeah. individuals, um, systems, um, policy. <laughs> it's, you know, it's everything. It's everything, yeah. you know, because I think that the core of self-compassion is about, is about recognizing that we're imperfect and recognizing that there is this thing we call pain yeah um you know and i think ultimately i mean we are relational human beings we are designed our break to be connected yeah you know um if you're interested in this idea check out um dr daniel siegel's interpersonal neurobiology oh, yes. that is um and he has a book called mind sight um which is it's definitely readable um it's very very readable but it is about connection so I guess for me actually self-compassion if I'm going to be like big big picture is about it's about having this honest kind open relationship with myself 
and that then gets mirrored in with others. I like that. And it's about, it is about looking their self first. So you put it out. I always say to my clients, well, that I know this is very like a cheesy thing, but mm. I always say, well, I did, I'm not telling you to look at yourself because when you get on an airplane, they tell you, they say, put your oxygen mask on first. So we've been told this for years, that metaphor we've been told. And I use that because everyone's, most people that yeah. I've, have been on an airplane or know what an airplane is and things like mm-hmm. that. And like, they're literally telling you mm. <laughs> every time you talk about four times, but we don't take that in. No, we don't. We don't. This is, this is, I think also part of the negativity bias piece, yeah. which is that bad is stronger than good that, yeah. you know, these um, negative experiences, that's what the brain, it, this is what keeps us safe. You know, yeah. if we take this idea that we're always trying to be safe. And in fact, that's something that, um, again, I think Kristen Neff and Shauna Shapiro have talked about in a lot of their research and work, which is, Ultimately, we're all just trying to be safe, you know, and the threat is not a saber tooth tiger anymore. The threat is us, yeah. like not meeting, you know, we make the threat, you know, it's yeah. that lofty expectation, yeah. you know, whatever it is. And we say, oh, it's, I, I, I don't want to let them down. And it's like, well, if we really go into this, yeah. this isn't, that's a convenient place to externalize what's yeah. going on inside you right now, yeah. right? And that's the, and in fact, there is, um, I know we haven't got loads of time, but there is a lovely um, word that describes what happens for quite a few people when they start to really engage in self-compassion, when they go beyond the Instagram fluffy posts, you know, is um, there's a term called backdraft and it's a firefighting term that is used to describe what happens when the, when a door to a burning building is opened and oxygen goes in and flames like rush out Mm. because the oxygen's fueling the fire. Right. Um, And with self-compassion, when we, when we allow ourselves that goodwill, when we give ourselves that kindness, Mm. the love goes in and the pain comes out. Right. Mm. And this is, I think often why it's really difficult because somewhere deep down in our subconscious, we know there's pain. Yeah, we do. But we don't want to acknowledge that. I mean, why would we? Again, we're trying to stay safe. Yeah. We're always right? trying to stay safe. We're always trying to stay safe. But but sometimes that doesn't actually serve us. It's yeah. almost like they then become just defense mechanisms mm. that stop us from feeling the pain. Um, and I find self-compassion to be a really nurturing way a slow way to start to open that the door yeah right it's almost we're not bursting it open because that's the adhd (laughs) way right just whip it open you know and it's like you haven't thought about what happens once it's open though have you it's a it's kind of and my course is designed specifically to kind of very slowly open that and i say at the beginning of it like this isn't a quick fix everyone like like this is going to take some time but i'm i've designed the course for it to be engaging with your yeah. brain in mind so that we can slowly open this door together yeah. you know so course um, design for people with ADHD is to keep them engaged because that's what's about it's the first point right right yeah yeah I yeah. just want to go back to what you said about safety it's almost like our you know and I, uh, mm. before we go into the next question is it's, it's like our brain sometimes tries to trick us that we've got to be safe we've got to be safe but sometimes that actually is contradicting itself because sometimes being safe mm. is then we're not facing that going out of that comfort zone and going into that vulnerability mm. but in all but when you get to the other side so it's get to the other side but you know what i mean when you get mm. to that other side or you let that pain out mm-hmm. at first it's painful right mm. and it's completely different and you're getting into that step zone you're in that fear zone but once you get past that it opens you know so many more doors it, it does. And I think that one of the things in the course as well, I ask people to do is to assign themselves like a support person. Um, that's just someone who they can speak to as they're going through the course, because there, I think there are points where we need people with us, yeah. particularly either other fellow ADHDs or someone who we like don't mask with someone who there's like a high trusting relationship in order to be able to to be able to do some of this, to be able to start to explore this, but not on their own. Yeah. And I think that helps. You know, it's like you're not opening the door on your own, mate. Like 
that there are other people here to help you, yeah. you know, particularly when when the backdraft can happen at times. I, mean, I know it's happened for me many times, particularly in my psychotherapy training. Yeah. Um, and it's almost always happened. Some of these like real backdraft moments, mm -hmm. they've often not happened when I've been on my own. They've yeah. often been in the presence of other trusting people, you yeah. know? And I think, again, it's, there's something about this is safe enough to let a bit of this out. Yeah. And also it's not, it's the safety that you can lean on other people, but it's also mm -hmm. the safety that you've not got to open the door in one go. Yeah. You know, you can do it. If you let mm. it go in one time, you've got nothing there. Then that's, that's like yeah. the extreme kind of version of it. But if you let it go a little bit at a time mm. and you've got people there, you've got that thing, mm. there, then that's mm -hmm. when you take in that step slow. And that's when you're not going boom, quick fix. You're going, yeah. And Cause most of the time, if you go quick fix, people, they shut the door. Yeah. If you go little by little, yeah. it's sustainable this and this open and closing thing is something that I also talk about in the course that a lot of the courses is, is kind of I've pinched ideas and thoughts and helpful things from lots of different people mm -hmm. that has worked for me yeah. um and some of the ideas are in there are original but quite a lot of them I'm, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel there are some incredible people out there who who have done stuff I'm just trying to put it in a form that's really accessible for the ADHD brain yeah um, but and there's a bit at the beginning where I talk about like an act of self-compassion is allowing yourself to be open, mm. but also consciously letting yourself close. That's mm. also an act of self-compassion, like particularly when you're choosing to close mm. is a conscious act, you know? Um, and there might be times when we do feel like a lot of pain and, you know, don't keep that door open. Like mm. don't do it to yourself. Mm. Like, I think there's something about that's that empowering bit of the yeah. fierceness of going, I choose to close at this point. I think I do mm. need to close at this point. That's really great. If yeah. you can do that for yourself without with acknowledging it and doing that, that's amazing. Because that's compassion. That, that's self-compassion. Mm. That's having agency. Mm. And let's face it, a lot of us don't feel very like that we have agency, yeah. you know, in our lives. So to be able to go, oh, this is this is this is quite painful for me. Mm. And then having that space to go, do I want to stay open to this? Or actually right now, wherever I'm at, do I need to close? Do I need to close? Mm. Again, this isn't about right and wrong. This is about having that feeling of yeah this is right for me right now and yeah. that's that's great is, you know yeah. um so yeah wow um, so how do people without obviously going too much into yeah. your into your uh, mm -hmm. course but how do you kind of spoke a bit about kind of doing a little bit about a little bit of power and the kind of fears how do people kind of move past this and and try and really take that self-compassion and open that door a little bit um It is about practice, I would mm -hmm. say. And I think it's about little, a, a little, little steps with self-compassion. And it's about giving yourself permission to try lots of different things. Like, let yourself be really curious about different ways of engaging with being mindful, but also this, this, this act of being more compassionate towards yourself. Um, the one thing that I've put, I've put in the course is about um, um, character strengths. Yeah. um and this is the we're not talking about strengths being skills we're talking about like our innate sense of strength and who we are as a person um particularly as an adhd -er. and a lot of us don't really know what our strengths are yeah. and so we kind of need to have something in order to reference mm -hmm. you know and the the via character strengths profile that um people have access to via the course um you can access it on your own not in the course but i've got a way of accessing it via the course so that you can integrate it into the course um it's like going well hang on a minute like where do these show up in my life and where do i need to be more present and mindful about these yeah. in my life because we discount all of this partly because we actually often don't even realize that it's a strength yeah like no one's ever like affirmed that in us quite often because they're just looking at this like bad behavior yeah, or this what's impulsive. The challenge? What's, what's the, the challenge? Yeah. What's yeah, no, what's the bit that's broken and 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 character strengths has come out of positive psychology movement, which is not asking what's wrong with you, but asking what's right. Yeah. You know, what's good, what's what's strength-based, what gives you energy, what makes you come alive. <sighs> we don't focus on those things no. at all, really. You know, they just, and so I think that's a bit for me that's fundamental to self-compassion as ADHD is. Um, we have to, we have to hold that in mind. Yeah. 
mm. as we're going through you know yeah, um so yeah wow and you can find the link for via character strengths below and so any last thoughts oh it's been great to chat to you <laughs> <laughs> i always love having a chat about adhd self-compassion as i'm sure you can tell <laughs> i can yeah it's great <laughs> um uh yeah i think um i think i guess one of the things i would say is is take if you're interested if anything that you've heard interests you stay respectfully curious about every new thought that you have as you go on a self-compassion journey stay respectfully curious just be open i like to kind of go oh that's interesting you know it's a little phrase i say in my head like mm -hmm. You know, maybe I was talking with a mate and they said something and I noticed something happened to me. And instead of going to that judgment place, just being like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. um, if any of you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, <laughs> Jake Peralta, one of the things that I do is I go, oh, cool, 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 in my yeah. head. Um, and it makes me laugh a bit, but it also helps me because I often yeah. remember it because I attach it to something quite funny and positive. So I can be like, oh, that was a really interesting interaction there's something for me to think about there so it isn't some big going on some big yoga retreat yeah. it's this thing that happens in our day-to-day -day lives yeah. and to take it step by step practice yeah. yeah 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 so where can people find you um so on my website adhdalex.com um and um my podcast which i do need to update um which is called sorry what was the question um which you can find there that's on instagram as well which is adhd podcast underscore fm or dot fm i can't remember it's one of the two i can never remember no, well, um, um so there's that um and yeah if when you go onto my website you'll be able to find a, a, the link to the course as well nice. um for that so uh, yeah so if anyone's interested in alex's course then click on the link below and um it's 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 launching soon oh i wish you all the luck with your course and Thank i know you. i'm gonna probably speak to you before that yeah um, but alex has an encouragement do you want to read it out or do you want me uh oh you can read it out okay it says unlike self-criticism which asks if you're good enough self-compassion asks what's good for you dr christine now i like that yeah. Oh, I get a bit emotional because it is because it's <laughs> so really it, it's a powerful it's a powerful quote, isn't it? Yeah. What's good for you? We it's never good. asked that. We never asked that question. Ah, oh, it's tearing me up. <laughs> and I know the quote so well. <laughs> so everybody, oh. ask yourself what's good for you. Yeah. And we're going to leave Alex. And in two weeks, we'll be dropping another episode. But actually, we're going to be dropping one every week in October because it is ADHD Awareness Month. And we've got another amazing guest next time. If you're interested, come on on a guest, pick my brain, have questions or want to tell your story in series one, then please reach out through our social media avenues and email. I hope you come back, you learn, listen, experience the world through not my eyes, but our eyes. Thanks again, Alex. Thank you. Have an amazing week, everyone. Remember, what's good for you. And we're out. Dear Diary, as Indigo Hub's process goes on, it makes me stop and wonder, could there be more for us, more light, more experience and more ways to see the world through our own eyes. I think this journey will be... Shh.